Hey team, Dr. Jack Gordy here, and today I'm introducing the T-Reg, or the Regulatory T-Cell, um, which is a great name. Um, and here we go, we'll, we'll have a look here. Where does it fit on the T-Cell tree? Well, actually, this is a bit unique, right? So I've placed it here, right? I've placed it here. T-Helper cells can turn into T-Reg cells, Regulatory T-Cells. Um, but actually, T-Regular... T regular, regulatory T cells can also form parallel to the T helper cell and the cytotoxic T cell in your thymus. So there's actually two forms of the regulatory T cell, one that formed in your periphery from a T helper cell and one that formed in your thymus and matured, sorry, matured in your thymus, all, um, uh, per, all circulating immune cells came from your bone marrow, uh, but the T cells mature in your thymus and the regulatory T cells can mature in your thymus too, right around here. Um, so what do T regs do? What do regulatory T cells do? Well, they regulate the immune system as a shorthand, but there is some important stuff here. So regulatory T cells do express CD4, right? And CD4 means helper T cell, right? But they aren't considered a helper T cell um, and the reason is, is because they do more than just help. So helper T cells, they um, equate the signals from antigens and cytokines, and then they sort of do a calculation about what kind of immune response we need. And then they produce cytokines to regulate the immune response, right? So that's what a helper, tell T, helper cell T cells do. They don't actually tackle the pathogens. You know, the cytotoxic T cells are killing vir virally infected cells. The neutrophils are producing neutrophil elastase to kill um, pathogens. The B cells are producing antibodies to bind to all the um, pathogens and disable them and label them for phagocytosis. The helper T cell, nothing, right? They're just helping, they just help. They're like the middle management of, of your immune system. But regulatory T cells do do something, right? So they do a bit of something and they release cytokines to modulate the immune response. So they sort of get to sit out on their own as what we call the regulatory T cells. So T regs, they regulate your immune system. And by that, we dial it down. They dial it down, they dial down the immune response. And they do that through two main ways. There's actually a few more, um, but two main ways are producing anti-inflammatory cytokines and immune suppressing cytokines, cytokines that shut down the immune system. And they also, go out, this is when they actually get their, you know, they roll up their sleeves and they, they get a bit dirty. They go out and they actually kill um, other immune cells. So they go out and they kill the other immune cells and that's why they're not helper T cells because they're actually doing something. Um, they go out and kill the other immune cells to prevent them from continuing on the immune response. So when are they important? Well, when you think about it, they're not good in cancer, right? In cancer, we want our immune system to recognize the cancer and kill it, right? So an activated T, T regulatory T cell is not ideal in cancer. Not ideal during the middle of an infection as well. So during the middle of an infection, we've got bacteria dividing, regulatory T cells aren't ideal, right? But this is where they come into their own, right? So chronic and excessive inflammation, um, which uh, occurs, you know, say we get a pathogenic response here and it doesn't stop, right? So SARS-CoV-2, people are experiencing long SARS-CoV-2 in which the virus is gone, but the immune system is continuing and it causes massive chronic fatigue and lung problems and everything, right? The immune system has started, but it won't stop, right? Um, and so this is chronic and excessive inflammation is when the T regulatory T cells can really help out. Another kind is um, autoimmunity, right? So um, here, this is a spinal cord. We can actually see just down here. And here we can see a lesion in that spinal cord. That's multiple sclerosis. That's an autoimmunity. And it's when our immune system sees a self antigen as a pathogenic antigen. In this case, they're seeing the insulating layers around neurons, um, the, the stuff that goes around neurons to insulate that electrical signal. They're seeing that insulation as a pathogenic as a pathogen, so we're having an immune response to it. We're having an immune response to a self antigen, and um, it is essentially causing inflammation. And it causes all sorts of problems, right? And we end up with lesions in our spine, and that's where the motor affects multiple sclerosis comes into it. Um, and so, regulatory T cells shutting down that response, that self antigenic response, is super important, super important function of that T cell. 
And last but not least, allergies. Mr. Peanut over here, right? So uh, regulatory T cells can help us go, no, that is not a pathogen. It's just Mr. Peanut. Can we calm down, right? And so um, a, a way to think about many of these diseases is as a dysfunction of the regulatory T cells. If the regulatory T cells um, are hyperactive, we can end up with uh, cancers because they're preventing um, it can help promote the growth of that cancer because they're preventing the immune response from attacking that cancer. Um, and if the regulatory T cell response is underwhelming, it's, well, you know, something's going on and we're not performing our full regulatory T cell response, we can end up with chronic and excessive inflammation. We can end up with autoimmunity and allergy. And indeed, there have been a, many mice studies where they knock out regulatory T cell proteins and they induce massive inflammation and autoimmunity. And, and end up it can end up being a lethal genetic deletion, right? So it's really not good to have a dysfunctional regulatory T cell. They're such an important part of the immune system. Right, so that was a quick introduction. Up in the next video, we're gonna do we're gonna uh, investigate how to induce a regulatory T cell response.